Hello and welcome back to the channel and this is the next episode of our course where we create a platformer game in a Unity 3D. Uh, so uh, this is where we left up with our uh, traps that should kill our player but what I would like to do uh, in today's episode is to create a specific type of platform uh, with the uh, movement we have here it would be really easy to create a platform that would just move up and down but what I have in mind is to create a platform that sort of uh, moves when the player uh, rotates when the player is up on it so if you'd like to visualize it uh, the uh, size the platform should stay horizontal when nothing is happening but as soon as it whoops as soon as the player maybe let me grab a line as soon as the player jumps on it right it should start rotating based on the position of the player and kind of take into consideration the weight of the player um to to or the position of the player to rotate one uh, way or another right so it rotates like this and if the player is gonna be and if the player is gonna be on that side right it should rotate the other way around and then when the player jumps off of the platform right so oops when the player jumps off the platform it should uh, rotate back into its uh set it should set its rotation to zero so back in the balance so pretty much that's the plan on what we're trying to achieve here so um yeah let's get moving and I'm going to start by creating just an empty and I'm going to call this weight platform. That sounds good enough. Uh, we need some art to visualize it. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to extract some sprites. Uh, this three should be good enough. Let's paste them here, close that. Okay, and I'm just gonna call this um, wait platform start, wait platform middle, and wait platform end. And let's uh, add them here let's start by resetting the transform this is here so i'm gonna add this as a child this as a child and then this one okay we have to spread them out a little bit so i'm holding control here to move uh, the the ties incrementally and also to make it uh, look a little bit better uh, I'm just gonna change the scale of the whole platform to 0.2 and now it's not so big uh, I'm gonna place it in our world I'm gonna move the starting position of the player here uh, and for now it's not gonna work at all um so let's treat it as a standard platform for now by adding box collider to the uh, to the uh, whole platform of course so here um and we have to adjust it and for now it's gonna be like a standard platform that our player can jump on right nothing new here um let's see uh to make it work we have to mark it as a ground uh no this object only because this is where we have our collider 
So let's run this again. And yeah, now it's a standard platform that our player can walk on. Uh, what's left for now to do is to actually write the code that's gonna rotate our platform as our player jumps on it and um, and moves across the platform. So let's stop that, go to scripts, and I'm gonna create new C sharp script. I'm gonna call this wait platform and I'm gonna move that here and open it. Okay. So um, let's try and define some things we're going to need here. Uh, one thing we're gonna need is definitely the information should the platform rotate. Should platform rotate because this is based upon whether the player is actually standing on the platform or not. Uh, what else? Um, we're gonna need to have information about platform length and this is because i would like the platform to rotate faster if the player is closer to the edge and slower uh slower when he's uh closer to the center so i'm gonna create private load platform length and also how many degrees should the platform rotate and i'm going to serialize that field so that's going to be private load rotation max degrees and by default the good value is going to be 30 degrees um yeah uh what else do we need uh, we're gonna need a reference to a player because we will have to use his position to calculate the speed so i'm gonna create private transform player and for now that should be good so first thing we can do is check for the collision uh, on collision enter 2d and we also gonna need probably a platform box collider so let's also grab a reference to that private box collider to d platform box collider okay so Let's start by checking for what is actually colliding with our platform. I'm going to do compare tag, do player. And if that's the player, the platform should rotate. Right? And I'm going to set the player to game object, get component. Transform is enough for our purpose. Okay, um, let's fix that real quick. And then in update, we're not gonna use the physics to rotate it, and you could probably um, play around with hinge joint to D to make the same functionality. Uh, but um, yeah, let's try and rotate our platform. So if should platform rotate, uh i'm gonna i'm gonna rotate it so i'm gonna take the transform rotation and i'm gonna rotate around z axis using quaternion rate towards so quaternion rotate so rotate towards uh starting rotation is gonna be transform rotation and then we are going to rotate quaternion angle axis so rotate around the axis 
uh, rotation max degrees uh, and the factor forward because we're rotating around the z-axis and then uh, we're gonna do uh, let's say rotation speed I'm gonna set 20 so here we have time so delta time times rotation speed and angle axis oh this should be uh, the argument to angle axis of course okay, so let's just drop it a little bit to make it more readable from to and max degrees delta so how oops what's wrong with that how fast we're actually going to be rotating okay and with that let's see what will happen if our player jumps on the platform uh nothing yet and this is because our player is untagged so let's tag him as a player and now as you can see it rotates to the max degrees but only in one place like only in one angle so it doesn't really care about about um of the direction we're standing on and also it does not rotate back as we leave okay so uh let's let's handle the case where the player is leaving the platform uh right so i could do that probably with on collision exit mm, let's do collision here and let's check game object compare tag player should platform rotate uh let's see uh, we're gonna set it to false actually and we're gonna set the reference to the player to null just to clear it out and then we're gonna check here if transform rotation um euler angles because that's gonna be easier is not equal to zero then we're gonna rotate it back to zero so transform rotation quaternion uh, rotate towards transform rotation quaternion uh, not system numerics quaternion quaternion um euler zero 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 because that's the that's the, like start rotation or balance rotation balance rotation and time so delta time times a rotation speed okay and now if we leave the platform it should rotate back to its starting position and it does not work no it did it does you can see it's when i jump off it's gonna rotate back but as you can see here we have some problems when it comes to detecting the collision right so if we go to our player and then the weighted platform you can see that he's not really falling down and we're gonna address that soon okay um yeah 
so the next step is going to be um, calculating what direction should the platform um, rotate to and I'm going to uh, create a new function here and it's gonna return float so calculate rotation direction um, and I'm gonna go here and say float direction uh, rotation direction it's gonna be equal to calculate rotation direction and here I'm gonna take the player relative position first so that's gonna be vector free player relative position and that's gonna be the player position relative to the position of our um, platform so inverse transform point player position and then we're gonna have um, rotation direction which is gonna be either one or uh, sorry one or minus one okay uh, and then what we'd like to actually have is actually that's not gonna be that's gonna be the rotation direction but i want to have something else i'm gonna rename that to rotation multiplier because as i mentioned i would like to move the tra the platform to rotate the platform faster when the player is closer to the edge of the platform so let's calculate that multiplier okay so that's math f absolute value of um math f clamp and here we have to calculate how close to the edge the player is so we need the platform length and then we can just calculate that by multiplying and setting the clamping values um clamp uh, we should probably yeah do that and do that and that's gonna give us the rotation speed multiplier um, yes and I'm gonna return that so rotation speed multiplier and call this rotation speed multiplier uh, and change the name and if I pass it here a rotation speed multiplier um, count resolve symbol oh of course you cannot because that's supposed to be calculated above okay and now if we try that we should actually see that the closer we are to the edge okay moving on uh, for now we can see that we have two things to solve here one is that our wonderful platform is only rotating in one direction right and second one we can see that our um, collision detection could be a little bit improved when it comes to sending on the platform so uh, let's start with the collision detection first and that's actually gonna be uh, pretty easy if we go to our player 
we can see that for now we're using box collider for the uh, detection of um, of our collision right and it's not precise and we can actually make it a little bit better so if we go to add component we could go and add polygon collector 2d and disable that <coughs> and let's see that and you can see this shape of a polygon collider which is not precise but we can adjust it for our needs and make it um, make it wrap the silhouette of our player more precisely so I'm just gonna start grabbing these points and moving them around and also adding new points when it's needed just to make it wrap my, my player more precisely okay so this should be good for now take a look at that again right we can see that this should be good enough maybe let's just drag that here that's here that should be good enough shape for our collider okay and it will be more performance heavy because we're um, adding more points but this is just a few so nothing that our game can handle save this and let's try this again oh we have to change the code of our <coughs> movement of course because we're not relying on box collider but uh, we need to change that so refactor um let's change this to be and uh, that's pro shift eight fh uh this should be poly oops polygon collider 2d and we can rename that factor name to polygon collider 2d okay and uh, also we have to change that to be of the correct type and that should basically fix the movement issue we had before so let's try that yes and now as you can see our height detection even though it's not perfect it should be a little bit better okay uh, what about um what about the movement in the other direction so let's go to our weight platform and basically here in angle axis uh, we have to know the rotation direction for our player so let's see actually i'm going to extract this from the function and set it up here and pass it as a parameter so player relative position use that here player relative position uh, not system numerics just vector free i'm gonna just get rid of all of that mm, yes and then i can get my direction from here as for example the rotation direction x one uh, sorry one minus one and then if i just make that multiplication now we're gonna have um minus degrees or plus degrees here so let's try this out and here we can see that the platform sh 
should rotate. But it does not. And this is going to have to do something with how our collision is detected. As you can see, now it's a little bit shaky. It can be very visible if we bump up the rotation speed. Right? Uh, so check this out. I'm going to add the debug log player leaving the platform here. And let's see what is going to happen. When I jump on it, it will try to rotate downwards, but then the collision is not precise enough to know that the player is actually standing on it. So it's going to try and go back to its previous uh, balance rotation. So what I'm going to do is actually uh mainly decide whether the player is still standing on the platform so i'm gonna get rid of on collision exit instead i'm gonna write something like this we're gonna basically perform a box cast from the platform app to see whether the player is standing on the platform so i'm gonna add private load height check distance I'm going to set it to 0.5 um, I'm going to add serialized field private layer mask layer layer aha, mask uh, and that's also good and then we're gonna perform the box cast so if we should rotate then perform a ray cast ray cast hit to deep physics to deep box cast from player platform box collider bounce center with a size of player box collider bounce size angle zero vector is vector or to app uh, check it for a distance of height check distance and use a player layer mask okay and this actually maybe to make it more readable I'm gonna bump it down Okay, and if we hit something, then we set the player to be null. Uh, sorry, if we don't hit something, so if this is null, if the player basically left the platform, we should set should rotate the platform to false and then return. And let's see where this basic boxcast helps our case uh, object reference is set to um so here let's see what i am missing here platform box collider Oh, we never said it. Uh, yes. So let's go to awake. Let's say platform box collider. It, this is going to be get component box collider to D. And with that, we should be good. Oh, and of course we have to set our mask to be 
uh, layer mask. So let's see. This is on default layer. Let's add a layer. Let's name it player. Set the player on its own layer. Uh, we can change the children and then detect the player here. Okay. Now you can see it's actually moving way better. Maybe the the height is not correct, but basically what we have is a rotating platform that is rotating as the player is standing on it. And you can see that the amount of rotation is limited to the position of our player, which is also cool. Mm. Yeah, basically that that would be it. One annoying part though uh, is of course the uh, the problem. Whoops. The problem with the come on, reload the domain. The problem how to solve that on anything that the player isn't falling down quick enough. Uh, this is mainly due to our own custom uh, gravitation implementation. But if you can see that jumping also is detected properly as a player leaving the platform. Yeah, uh, I think I'm going to leave you with that. Uh, I will see whether I can solve that issue. Maybe you have an idea how to solve it. And if not, I think we're going to continue with that. But that's the functionality I wanted to do that. Even though it's a little bit annoying. But I can see where I can figure it out. So yeah, thank you for that. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Goodbye.